you've ever been in the AEC during the latter part of every semester, it gets very noisy and busy, and it causes a significant uh, safety issue for us. So Joseph Kittinger and Justin Wade and Carlos Mejia will talk to us about a warning enunciation system that they designed. All right. I would like to start by explaining the goal to you guys of our project. It's basically to design and provide a warning enunciation system at the AC to improve uh, safety awareness for students and other faculty members. Our scope of our project, this, the project will design and test the warning enunciation system using programmable logic controllers. Uh, the system will be developed to create a visual and sound warning throughout the AEC hybrid area. I would like to start by explaining to you what is a programmable logic controller. Uh, it's also known as a POC. It's an industrial computer that monitors inputs and outputs and makes logic-based decisions uh, for automated processes in an industry or any other machines. Uh, here's a picture of the Applied Engineering Center. Uh, as Professor, Professor Nelson described, it's a noisy uh, work environment. And uh, as you can tell, the height of the machines we had to overcome those obstacles to provide our stations for the warning initiation system. Uh, I will explain more in detail in the next few slides of what our warning initiation system will consist of. Uh, an overview of our project, the initiation system will have two different sound and visual warning based on what button is pressed. Uh, there will be six stations in total. There will be two stations on the north side of the wall stations on the south side of the wall, one at the west, and one at the east. On the east side of the wall, that's where our main panel will be at, and uh, we'll have a master reset button at the main panel. And I'll go in more in detail in the next couple slides of what each system will do. With the help system, there'll be a yellow push button at every station, and uh, Whenever you hit that yellow button at any stations, uh, an amber light will come on to allow uh, faculty members to identify where the help is needed at that station. And uh, an example of that could be if a student needs help with uh, running a machine or finding the tools or equipment for the machine, uh, a faculty member will know where exactly the help is needed. And also, the enunciator will only sound for the amount of time the button is pressed. For the emergency system, a red push button will be uh, pressed at any uh, locations of the six stations. Uh, whenever the red push button is pressed, a red light will come on. And also, what well, we made this one different, uh, so, so uh, people won't will uh, identify where the emergency is coming from. We're also going to make the amber light come on wherever the red push button is pressed. A, di a distinct emergency sound will come on uh, whenever the emergency button is pressed. An example of that could be if a chemical spills or anything along that area, you would hit the red button so that way people will evacuate out of the area. All right, for the PLC options, there were several different choices that you see in industry. The main ones would be Allen Bradley, Siemens, and Mitsubishi. Allen Bradley here in the USA is what you will see in the industry a lot. For our options, we chose to look at Allen Bradley, which is the priciest of the three, uh, but the most computing power. Easy Automation, which is a cheaper alternative, but after looking into it more, we found out that there was, they weren't very well made and reliable after about a year. They ended up being kind of junk. And IDEC was what we looked into last, and they're using the PLC class currently, which gave options for the class to use it later on for projects and they were cost effective compared to Allen Bradley. For our main panel controller, we ended up going with the Smart Axis Touch, which included an HMI, a human machine interface, which you see in the picture here, 
and it also included the PLC, which had eight inputs and your six outputs, which is what we would need for our push buttons and stack bot setup. It also allows for three additional controllers to be used for more inputs and also allows for Ethernet to be hooked up to it, which decreases wiring that would be needed to hook them together. For the satellite PLC controllers, we also went with the IDEC Smart Axis. And it doesn't have an HMI, it is just the PLC, and it has 24 additional input and outputs per controller. We use the 24 to allow for more if anyone ever needs to put something else into the design. And they also hook up by Ethernet, which allows for easier installation. And it also decreases the wire that needs to be pulled at when they are installed. For our power supply, we ended up going with an IDEC 60 watt. And to determine that, we found the power that was needed to supply each component in the system. As you can see, our main panel only is going to need roughly 40 watts, and our secondaries will need 52. But that is with every light turned on at the same time, which shouldn't ever happen in the program. Here are pictures of the components that we'll be using. We have our panel, our main controller in the middle, our secondary controller up in the upper right, push button enclosure, and our two push buttons. For the stack light options, there were three main types. You have your xenon bulb, your halogen, and your LED. The result that we chose was the LED light, and we did a, like a cost analysis on if you had to replace a halogen or xenon bulb, which I think has 2,000 hours is what they're rated at, which should never happen. An LED should, has a, uh, it should last 25,000 hours. So if you just have to replace one bulb, there's your cost difference. And choosing the LED over the two incandescents. Here is a lamp comparison of the three. It is, it has been turned into a graph of, based on the six <coughs> categories and turned into a scale to show the difference between them. And here are stack light -like components that we used. We have our mount, our two bulbs, and our stand, our cap and seal, and our board. As for the locations, as for the locations of the stack lights, uh, they require that they be high enough so that they be visible throughout the whole entire AEC high bay area. And the only viable option was to place them above the overhead cable trays. And within the next few slides, I'll show exactly where these locations are at. This is the floor layout that shows where the stack lights, the satellite panels, and the master panel will be located at. Uh, as you can see, the main panel is conveniently located outside the offices. And for the push buttons to activate the system, they will be placed directly below the stack lights. And in this picture, you can see the locations of the stack lights. And you can tell that they are high enough that they can be seen over all of the tall machines in the AEC. This will be the master panel stack light location, and it will be mounted just above the clock and right below the American flag on the crossbeam. This picture depicts on how we will mount the stack lights to the I beams. And as you can see, on both sides of the beam, there's a beam clamp and that will be connected with a flat piece of metal. And on that flat piece of metal, the stack lights will be mounted to those. This is where the master panel will be located. And as you can see, it's conveniently placed outside the offices. Uh, currently, there is a fire extinguisher in the way, and that will have to be removed and uh, placed somewhere near. And uh, the reason we chose this spot instead of any other 
is due to the fact that it's the only wall large enough to fit our master panel. This shows the master panel design, and for the internals from left to right, you can see the terminal blocks, the ethernet switch, which connects all of the master panels and satellite panels, and then the power supply. On the front door, the square is like Justin was talking about. It's the human machine interface, and it's basically the brains of the operation. And then uh, your, red your red button for your emergency, your yellow button for your health, and your black button for your master reset. This is the satellite panel design, and as you can see, the internals are laid out uh, fairly similar. The only difference on these is on the front door, there are no push buttons. And that's due to the fact that each one of these boxes, uh, two of these boxes, they control two stack lights and two push button sets. So the satellite panels will be placed uh, in between these two sets. This is the picture of the completed test system. And as you can see, the one smaller satellite box does have push buttons in it. And that's due to the fact that this will be placed on the east wall, uh, right behind the water jet. And uh, it only controls one stack light and one set of push buttons, so there was no need for extra labor or materials. The whole system is connected so they can communicate with each other between satellite boxes and the master panel um, via Ethernet cable. And there were two options at the AEC to do this, and that was to run piping along the wall and then run Ethernet cable through those and into the cable trays and through the floor trenches and the cable trays. And our option was to use the floor trenches and overhead cable trays. And as you can see in picture one, it just shows uh, the, over, or the, the trenches that are available at the AEC. And then the right picture uh, shows the overhead cable trays that we will be using. And the cost analysis shows why we ended up doing this. And it's not a huge amount of difference, but uh, it came up to be close to about $300 difference of using the trench versus not using the trench. And uh, that's due to the lesser amount of materials and labor to do so. This flow chart is just a basic uh, setup of how the PLC will be programmed to react when a certain push button is uh, pushed and what lights or horns need to be turned on. And basically for our product, our total cost for this project to happen, we got our satellite panels roughly about $1,600. Our main panels about $750. Accessories, which includes a five port ethernet, wiring, and uh, the rails, that came out to be about $250. And then we also got a contract labor for roughly for $3,200. So our total price, our total uh, cost for this project to happen going to be right about $5,900. And we have uh, future recommendations to continue to troubleshoot and program the controllers. Uh, right now, we don't have, we're not getting enough, uh, we're not getting 24 volts out of the outputs, so we cannot get this to work as for right now. But we will continue to uh, troubleshoot this issue and get it fixed. And we would like to uh, possibly linking the, to USI security network. For example, like I said, if the red push button is hit for an emergency, that way security will find out, you know, the red push button was hit at the AC and we'll probably be needing assistance from them due to it might be like a hazardous chemical that we have to evacuate the AEC or any type of emergency along those areas. And we look into a new stack light annunciator the current uh, enunciator that we have is running through uh, 80 through 100 decibels, which should be loud enough for the AEC. But we got it running yesterday at 100 decibels, and we were sitting right next to it and it didn't even affect us at all. So there must be some type of uh, faulty in the enunciator or false advertising on whatever we ordered it. In our conclusions, uh, basically, the initiation system will provide a safe work environment after we find the troubleshooting for this system you know, for students and staff at the AC Highway area. And I would like to thank uh, Professor Nelson and Eller for advising us throughout this project and Dr. Mitchell for providing the funds for me to make this uh, project uh, happen. And Donna, you know, to keep us in the deadlines whenever we had to meet them. And Justin Amos, 
as the lab manager at the AUC, helping us and providing the right tools whenever we needed it at the AUC. Yeah, questions? All right, any questions? We have uh, recently instituted some new security measures over there at the AE, such as keeping the door locked, and that leads to needing like a doorbell, you know, for someone that needs to get in. How hard would it be to uh, integrate uh, the doorbell into the system that you currently have designed? We have several inputs and outputs still open for the system to be used, so it would just be the labor to hook up some sort of sensor on the door and run it out to one of the PLCs that had the open inputs and outputs, wired into that, and set up a simple program that senses it. Thank you. For your uh, enunciator, your sound, is it voice or is it just sound? Just sound. sound. And did you give any consideration to the decibel levels that would be required to hear above that equipment once it's running, while also staying underneath the uh, requirements for OSHA to not hurt your ears? Well, the OSHA requirement would be 85 decibels over a period of time, but to hear it over like the vacuum system and stuff, it should. When it sounds, it shouldn't be on long enough to bother the OSHA standard, but it still needs to be high enough to where everyone in the building can hear it, even in the classrooms, because if something happens on the shop floor, they still need to evacuate. All right, other questions? All right, if there aren't any other questions, let's give them a hand.